today I'm going to talk about how we use org mode in some of our day-to-day -day work. Org mode is a really wonderful uh, outlining and structured text tool. What I mean is we have headlines that start with an asterisk. Here we have two asterisks, that makes it a second level heading. And if you scroll down, we can see a third level. What we can do is use tab to expand and collapse these headings. Okay, so if we put it, our cursor on a headline and press tab, you can collapse them uh, very quickly and then see what, what's there. Or we can press shift tab and see the whole thing in various ways. If we're at the head of a, in the first uh, character, we can use fast keys like N to go back and forth around things. Or we can press J and quickly jump to, say, navigation and press tab to see what we're, uh, what's going on there. Okay, we can uh, do a lot of interesting things. So here we have uh, a headline that's a third level. If we want to change it to uh, second level, we can use alt arrow and change only one thing. Or we can go up to, to this cursor and if we uh, use alt shift arrows, then we can change all of the headlines within that section. If you're at the beginning, again, you can use some uh, speed commands, so R and L change those, and capital R changes everything in the subtree. Like that. Okay, and if you want to rearrange these, that's also quite easy. Um, you can use uh, Alt up and down to change the order of, of the trees, or if you're at the beginning, you can use uh, Shift D and Shift U to do that very, very easily. The point is, Orc mode is very good at outlining, and you can very quickly see various levels of, of, your, of your document. It's also fabulous for task management. So if you put a marker like to do here, you can, uh, org mode will treat this as, as a to do item. And we can use uh, shift to change this to be done very quickly and, and even track how much of this task is done. Uh, and we can do that. It puts a recording of the time. You can have check boxes for various tasks. And that makes it nice to make sure that you've actually finished everything that you wanted to do. Now, one point uh, in here is if we have uh, deadlines that tells us when we want to have things done, we can use something called an agenda and see what, what all is coming up. So if you have these sprinkled throughout uh, a document, then we uh, enter the agenda. Let's limit this to the, the current uh, buffer subtree and press A to see what things are due. And down here now, I can just press T and mark it as done. And then similarly, T, mark it as done. And if I refresh this with G, then I see there's nothing else to do. All right, that's pretty handy. Uh, it's also handy for capturing tasks as they come in. So let's say you're working on something, maybe giving a talk, and suddenly your phone rings, and you don't want to interrupt your workflow. You type Control C, C to capture. Let's make this a to-do uh, item. And we'll say uh, send information. And let's say we're going to uh, have that done tomorrow. Uh, that way it will be a, a reminder. And now you just save it, and it will write it out to a file called um, task.org in my case. So it's easy to capture things without getting too distracted. Tags and properties are, are, are useful. So let's uh, take a look at what those are. This slide here is a tag on this headline. Let's look at, at this file here. You can see contacts.org is uh, a file that I use to keep track of emails. You can see uh, this properties here is called a drawer and it stores various uh, pieces of information. So again, we go to our agenda and uh, we're going to type M, which is going to be a search. And we're going to search for email properties that match this expression. Okay, that's going to give me three contacts uh, of people that I uh, am related to. You can open them up uh, directly here and see that. 
you see some of these are also tagged with uh, with various things so let's let's run that again and this time we'll look for people that are tagged by group that gives me uh, a bunch of people here and we could also uh, run um, group say minus um, MS that would give me people that are tagged group but not MS for example so those are pretty handy the, the next very handy thing is links we can put links anywhere you can link to uh, various sections so here is a, a target called end and if I click on this it'll take me straight to it so you can use that for navigation or you can uh, link to a subsection so this will go to this thing called a subsection you can link to file so this is going to open blog.org at line 415 right that's a, a file that I I've used for writing blog posts you can also link to um, certain headings so again we can uh, open this and it goes now to this particular heading you can have links to URLs so this will open my group website in a browser you can link to info you can even link to emails uh, in, in GNU's you can have active links that show you uh, information or this will open uh, a website with that DOI uh, popping up alright so that's uh, very handy you use these links for all kinds of things from navigation to providing functionality we like to have images uh, in our, our buffers and Emacs knows how to see them so it is no problem to have images that are in line uh, with the text that you're writing tables are extremely easy to uh, to create and you start by putting in a line let's say we want to uh, make this and now I press tab and I can put in some numbers every time I press tab it will automatically align and you can move around in uh, this with by pressing tab or if you use shift tab you can jump around in the table pretty easily okay tables maybe have really wide columns so let's say you have this one uh, and you want to to shorten it what we do is um, put in a bracket L and bracket 10 and then if we align this it will shrink it and and get rid of this uh, it's just not showing it so here if I uh, redo this you can see that, that the data is still there it just changes the appearance now tables are, are good you can sort them let's say we want to uh, sort this in uh, ascending order so we type control C caret and let's sort it in numeric so we press N and we get 1 to 9 if we run that with a capital N, it will be in the opposite order. We can uh, also move the rows around. So all we have to do is press Alt and move the, the rows around like this. And we can do the same trick with columns. So we can swap the columns uh, pretty easily. Sometimes you want to add or uh, delete delete rows. So let's say uh, that we're, we're here and I want to um, add a row then the, the simplest is is alt shift down and that will create a new row that I can put uh, some some things in or if I want to uh, delete this column then I can try alt shift uh, left and that will delete it or I can do alt shift right and add a column back so it's easy to add rows add columns uh, and so forth it's reasonably easy to import data so let's say I have uh, this data here it looks like tab delimited data uh, all I have to do is um, is run this command and that was data.tab and it will automatically insert that and if you want to put a line there we type control C dash and you get a line
need to convert your table to LaTeX, maybe that's uh, what you prefer to use. We just highlight this and we can control C, control E, control B, L, and we'll look at it in a buffer. There is your table. You can paste that into your LaTeX environment uh, if you need to do that. If you want HTML instead, there is HTML code that represents that table. Okay, of course we can have equations uh, that get rendered in, in uh, Emacs. If you want to see the code, we just type control C, control C to get uh, rid of it, and you can get it back by running that. You can use nice symbols like this. If you use this toggle pretty entities command, then they actually look uh, kind of pretty. We use executable code a lot. So we are always writing blocks. Uh, here is an example of Python. And we can run it and capture the results uh, right in our buffer. We can also do um, inline code. So let's say uh, that I want to make this uh, 23. Then I can insert the 34, and it, it even keeps the old result uh, if, you, if you want it. OK, so let's check out. Uh, this looks kind of ugly here, but if we export what you see is that uh, the LaTeX is not showing any of the code and it is showing these calculated numbers. All right, we can use the, the tables to create data sources. So here is a table that you saw before. We can pass it as a variable. Uh, here we call it data. And if we run this code block, it's going to print the fact that uh, it's reading this table as an array. Uh, or a list of lists in, in Python. Uh, and we have links here. If you want to remember where this table came from, we can just click on this link and uh, see where it goes. OK, we can make figures uh, pretty readily. Uh, here we just save a figure in Python. It's shown down here as a link, and, and we rescale uh, for the presentation over here. So that, that's pretty convenient to show your analysis in line. Uh, for your own analysis. We can also write programs to the disk, so we don't have to keep uh, everything in a code block. Let's say I want to tangle this out to hello world.py. So this is a simple uh, Python program. Here we run the org babel tangle command that generates hello world.py. We can see it right here. And of course we can now run a shell command that runs that Python script, and there it is. We can do compiled languages. So if you need to write Java code, here's a, a hello world uh, in Java. We can uh, tangle this out. That tangles out hello Java. Uh, we have to run a shell command to compile it. And now we have uh, to run the program itself, and there we get hello Java. You can do C. Here's a simple C uh, program. Uh, we, again, tangle it. And we compile it uh, in this step here. And then we can run it and see that uh, C works. Of course, I have all the compilers uh, for these installed. C++, uh, we can tangle out to a, a plus plus file. We make a make file here. Um, let's tangle this one. And now we can uh, run make hello. And that gives us uh, something. And we run finally our a dot out and you can see that this works and last but not least we have Fortran so let's compile this one and we can do that as well all right there's a lot more language support this is an example of it um, R, awk closure uh, some of these that uh, like Haskell there's all kinds of uh, support for different languages, and it's certainly possible to write new, new languages. OK, the, one of the next reasons we use it is that as, as nice as it is to work in org mode this way, most of the time we often want to uh, actually export something for publication. So let me take a look here at this manuscript. This shows some setup uh, that we're going to eventually expand uh, into a, a LaTeX source file. This is a paper we're writing. You can see the outline down here. 
We can expand it. You see links in here that uh, have all kinds of information in them, um, and so forth. There are pictures, uh, etc. All right, what that gets converted to, let's see if this opens, is a PDF file that we can submit for publication. All right, so here you can see what that uh, turns into, uh, which is pretty, pretty convenient. Okay, we can create HTML uh, as well. I showed you the export. Uh, if we look at, um, at this particular one, control C, E, H, O, then this is going to create an HTML file and uh, have some of the contents in here. This is more or less how I, I write the blog. Um, there's some additional uh, export features that, that we use to filter and control how the links in, are created. Okay, extensibility is uh, one of the main reasons you can look into uh, the contrib directory. So here you can see all of the things that people have contributed to make org mode do various things. Um, so that is uh, something that, that we like. All right, so if you want to try doing what I've, I've showed you, you can uh, look at this GitHub repository. It has all of the code that I used uh, to do this. It includes Emacs for Windows and it's pre-configured to do most of what you saw today uh, except for all of the programming things. You'll have to install LaTeX, Python, and other languages if you want to use them. There are other options as well. Uh, I've used the Prelude and Emacs starter kits um, out there and uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty handy. So just to uh, give uh, a quick overview of, of what it is, Um, we can modify this program uh, real quick. See uh, the overview that I showed you um, in terms of the outline. Uh, you can see this uh, kind of table of contents uh, look, view and uh, quickly navigate to the next, next step. All right, so that should be dash slide. And so that brings me to the end. And uh, you might ask after seeing those things, why are you using org mode? And uh, what could you do with it uh, as well? Thanks for watching.